Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, today, I am honored to be in the holy presence of Jake and Eleanor at the Jake and Eleanor Studios in Flemington, New Jersey. And so, uh, at this time, I would also like to welcome Amelia Santara to the program, my, my wonderful co-host. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And I would like to come first to Eleonora of Ele- Jake and Eleanor Studios. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our home studio. Hi, everybody. This is Jake. Welcome to Flemington and our home. Thank you. Okay. And as some of you may know, uh, Amelia Santara and myself have been... Uh, on the east coast of the United States, we did a seminar uh, in upstate New York, right next to the beautiful um, Hudson River. And Jake and Eleanor were kind enough to house us and, and work with us with the Kundalini. They took us across the Delaware River yesterday, and, and uh, they've just been the most wonderful hosts in the world. I mean, I would invite all of you to contact Jake and Eleanor to see if you would li- you too would like to have this type of an experience here. And Jake and Eleanor are nodding their head. <laughs> little do they know. Little do they know. Yes, yes, yes. But you know. You know. <laughs> Today, the, the, the title of the show is Swimming with Sharks. However, I would like to, uh, to, to give my co-host the, uh, the, the clearance to make her announcement. This is my very final announcement for the seminar that is happening in Ireland next weekend. We still have some places available, so if you are interested, and particularly if you are hearing this for the first time, please do contact me. Um, my email address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com. The seminar is happening on Saturday the 29th of March and Sunday the 30th of March, and it begins... Um, in the beautiful, beautiful area of Newgrange in County Meath. And Chrism will be leading this seminar, and it's going to be a wonderful experience. If it is anything like the seminar in New York, it will be wonderful. Um, so again, kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And at this point as well, I would like to just give you the email address if you would like to make a donation to contribute and support the work that Chrism does. The address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the right-hand upper corner you will see the donate button. All donations, small, big, whatever you would wish to contribute are more than welcome. And again, I'd like to give you my email address once more. It's kundalinimatters at gmail.com if you have any questions at all about the seminar next weekend. And I'll also give you my uh, phone number at this point. It's 00353-860297676. And you can contact me that way as well. Back to Chrism. Yeah, thank you, Amelia, and thank you, Eleanor and Jake. Uh, a few more announcements here. I'd also like to uh, let you know that we are on Facebook at uh, Facebook groups, and you go, you look for Kundalini Awakening exclamation point. You also have Kundalini Healing on the Facebook network, as well as uh, uh, Chrisam Shakti Pot. You know, some of the folks that that want to be uh, activated into the Kundalini, well, they can join that group as well. Uh, we also have the Yahoo Groups on the Yahoo Groups Network, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, and also we have Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo Groups. Is everything good, my dear? Mm-hmm. Before we continue, I'd like to tell you a little bit about YouTube. Uh, the YouTube videos can be found at Chrism and then the number zero, and then Kundalini, because it looked to me when I made it like Chrism O Kundalini. <laughs> anyway... If you go Chrism O Kundalini on YouTube, you'll see about 290 videos that are all about the Kundalini that you can, you can uh, watch and uh, rewind or, or laugh at to your heart's content. And Amelia would like to 
just about the chat room, Chrism. Neither Chrism or I have the chat room um, visuals in front of us, so we're not aware of who's there or who has tuned in. Of course, this is a different time, so maybe there's loads more people or maybe there's no one. We don't know. <laughs> but welcome if you're there and you're listening. And please do call in if you've got anything that you would like to comment on or ask a question of Chrism. Uh, the guest call-in number is 347 934 I better do that again. 347-934-0026. So welcome to everybody in the chat room. That's right, everybody in the chat room. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's it, it's always a great pleasure to see you there. And even though I can't see you there right now, I know that you're there and I appreciate your presence. Feel free to call in at 347-934-0026. This subject today, uh, swimming with sharks, is a, is a fairly uh, ooh, comprehensive discussion that, we, that I want to have with you about what it is to have kundalini amongst people that don't. And uh, as, as some of you may know, Amelia and I were just in uh, New York City, Broadway, and uh, you know, you, you hear all the all the aggressive stories about New Yorkers. Well, I want you to know that it's all not true in, in, in regards to our experience there. Everybody in New York love you all. You're absolutely fabulous people, beautiful, wonderful, driven people. And I just want to, to thank you for creating the uh, the environment that Amelia and I uh, got to participate in with regards to walking the street of Broadway all the way to Central Park and then back to our, our hotel on 44th Street. Didn't meet a mean person the whole way. It was really, really great. Uh, but with regards to Kundalini now, uh, Kundalini people are going to be at some stage of their development very, very sensitive to the energies of others. And you'll see the aggressiveness, but you won't just see it, you'll feel it. You'll feel it in your energetic field. You'll feel it because at, this, at, at some point, actually many points during your Kundalini Awakening uh, experience, people that are aggressive, people that are violent, people that are uh, within certain areas of their evolution that, re that allow them to, to have, shall we say, uh, fairly excitable levels of expression will come into your field, will come into you. And these, these, these people sometimes want to spread their, their ideology or their emotional expression uh, into the population at large, not just to you, the Kundalini person, but to kind of everyone around them. It, it, it kind of goes along with the whole idea that misery loves company. I'm sure some of you may have heard that phrase. Misery loves company. And so... Some of these people who are walking around doing this are like sharks in the water looking for someone else to bite, to spread their misery. And I'm just going to tell you right now, you don't have to partake of that. You can see it coming, you can feel it coming, and you don't have to be part of their equation. One of the first ways you can get around that is, of course, is to do the forgiveness work. Uh, as Amelia and I were walking down Broadway, Sometimes we would separate, and, and, and masses of people would be flowing between us. And between Amelia and I, we would set up a field of radiance that everybody got to walk through. So in a way, you might see us as benevolent kundalini sharks. You know, are, we, are we walking Broadway, but we're spreading a radiance, and people are just walking right through it the same way that, shall we say, a more challenging uh, level of interaction with people will also be spreading it, although, you know, you'll walk through that as well. So we thought we'd just kind of counterbalance some of the negativity by adding in some positivity, and boy, did we receive, did we receive a wonderful reflection of that back into, into our energetic field as we came upon the extremely nice and, and profoundly nice, in some ways, people who were uh, populating the streets of Broadway. Now, Another another aspect of this is, is is there are people out there who are absolutely saints on this world, and they are also working hard 
to dispel the sharks of trauma, the the sh- the sharks of of uh, in some way war inflicted trauma. And and uh, at this point, I would like to come on over to 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 Jake Carney here, and I would like him to tell a little bit about what he does with regards to helping other people come into a more positive flow of interaction. And I want you to know that Jake is is Kundalini activated, as is Eleanor. And uh, with Jake's Kundalini action, with with his activity, he is actually channeling in some very high and and beautiful noble expressions and so i'm going to turn it on over to jake right now hi everybody i'm jake and uh nice to be on the air with uh, you all uh as chrism says i do uh work with people some poor and mostly veterans and uh, try to get uh, benefits and uh, do some counseling with them because as a professional counselor with the Veterans Administration for uh, post-traumatic stress and for uh, drugs and alcohol. Um, Still do a lot of that work and uh, do it on a daily basis in America and Ukraine, believe it or not. (laughs) So uh, that's mostly what I I do. And and Jake, do you get paid for this work you're doing? Uh, uh, No, no, no. I'm lucky uh, to be uh, well off. I I can, in other words, I can spend time and gas money helping people. I'm lucky to be in that position. What compels you to do this work? No, I guess I always had it in me. And, you know, I was, uh, you know, probably always a priest or a social worker at, at heart. And when you when you come up to these people and you see them in the hospitals, you see them with their legs blown off or their arms blown off or or scenarios of that of that level, what happens to you in your heart? What happen, What does your kundalini drive you to do? Oh, to uh, approach them and uh, let them know that uh, maybe my legs weren't blown off, but I was there in uh, uh, the low levels of depression and uh, not knowing a direction and angry at the world. And uh, you know, at least at least I'm there with them. You know, I, I tell them, and so they have a friend in me, and they can identify with me. So, were, were you in any kind of an arm conflict yourself? Yes, I was in Vietnam. And what did you do in Vietnam? I was uh, infantry uh, 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 squad, and we would go to rescue people that were under fire in different areas of the country by uh, air mobile, in other words, chopper. And were you fired upon yourself? Uh, yes, probably almost on a daily basis. Okay, all right. And so this would this would have given you the experience of having uh, certain levels of... of uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, the stressful post-traumatic stress. post-traumatic stress. Oh yeah. yeah, I definitely have it. I'm certified in that. <laughs> certified? One. You got you got that badge, did you? That's one thing I'm certified <laughs> in. <laughs> and I'd like to come on over to Eleonora. Eleonora is gracing us with her presence. She is a a Ukrainian woman. She's from the city of Kiev, which the Americans mispronounce as Kiev, and I would like to introduce you to Eleonora. Hello, Eleonora. Hi, everybody here. We are lucky to have our friends, Chris and uh, Emilia, and we were lucky to be at the Hudson River Seminar, also, which we enjoy very much. And then um, I have no hesitation about to be here. I left all my fears about <laughs> Everything, and then <clears throat> that's why I'm feeling much better now, and uh, that's uh, what I think Jake and me were looking forward. And when you're when you're talking with uh, your relatives right now, of course, there's the the uh, the armed takeover of uh, parts of Ukraine by by uh, the Russians. Um, are you able to give a little bit of comfort and healing to those who are? within that situation or you, yeah you... that that's what i hope i will be able to do this that's what actually i see my mission now you know especially after being a uh, kundalini activating yeah yeah that's that's what i feel to do it thank you thank you eleanor thank you jake yeah. and i just want to expound upon what they're talking about both of them are are, are talking about 
uh, working with people that have been harmed by those who would be considered to be a shark. Uh, let's talk about Vladimir Putin. Let's talk about uh, the people that uh, uh, you know created the the, uh, the Vietnam War just because they wanted to try out their new advanced weapons. These are the sharks that we sometimes have to swim around or swim or swim through in some ways, and with a with a kundalini activation, because you will be feeling, feeling things of a, in a much greater degree, it's very important for you to learn that you don't have to take on the energy that they're giving you. You don't have to have them bite you. And even if they bite you, their, their teeth just bounce right off you. Okay? They bounce right off you, and you go your way, and they will go their way looking for easier prey, just like any other predator. Okay, Kundalini people, if they don't know that they have it, then they're just extremely, extremely sensitive people, and sometimes this can get them into trouble. And so for, for those of you that may be wondering whether or not your Kundalini uh, activated, I just would uh, like to steer you to the uh, website uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. And I would like to thank Glenn Ola for putting that site together. I would like you to go to uh, the, the left-hand menu, and I'd like you to, to look at the signs and symptoms of kundalini and start matching them up for yourself. Match it up. And if you get two or three uh, phenomena that's common with your situation, then you can pretty much begin to look into the areas of kundalini activation and uh, awakening for yourself, and you might be able to, to bring a little more balance into your life as Jake and Eleanor do for those that they come in contact with. It's not an easy task. And, and, Jake and, and Jake and Ellie do it. They do it out of the kindness of their heart. My gosh, these are the penultimate kundalini people. These are people that you're passing on the street. You know, they're not, they're not wearing, you know, a, a big T-shirt saying kundalini active. You know, they're not going around, uh, you know, waving a flag or wearing a crown or anything like that, even though their crowns are lit up. You know, they're just, they're going through the world in a helpful and, and, and a service for others oriented mentality and activity. And this is right in line with the safeties. For those of you that aren't familiar with the safeties, well, you go to that website I just told you about, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. You go to the left hand margin and about the fifth one down, you'll see the safeties. And these, these are the safeties that Eleonora and Jake are practicing on people just because the expanded levels of love and concern that they have for people. This is, you know, I'd like you to use them as a, as a model, perhaps, for your service that you can give into the world at this time. And it's the same with Amelia. We all know about Amelia and her KITT. We know that she doesn't charge for this. Now, she's accepting donations at this time, but, you know, she has a level of clientele that she doesn't charge for. And if you would speak to that a little bit, Amelia. Yes, Susan. Yes, the work that I, I do with the KITT is something, it's voluntary, and it's something that I do um, for the Kundalini. And it's such an honor to be able to do this. As Jake does, it's not about, you know, receiving anything back for myself. It's about giving. It's about, you know, giving with love and expanding that love that's within me. And and what the Kundalini does um, for other people through me, the love and the healing that is given to them. And so it is always an honor. It's always, it's actually a great joy. I mean, even when things occur that are difficult for people and they come with these things, it is such a joy to be in that position, able to be um, there for people. So it's never about money or it's never about, you know, looking to receive anything back for myself. Um, in that sense. But the interesting thing is that, it, you know, that it's not a cliche, but it is often used. It is in giving that we receive. And this I find to be very, very true. You know, in giving healings, we receive healings. In giving love, we receive love. Um, so it is a beautiful system. So, I mean, it is something if everybody does, um, gosh, it would be so wonderful. 
Okay, it looks like we have a caller here. So I'm just now because Amelia is sitting with me here in the studio, Jake and Elliot studio in uh, Flemington, New Jersey. Uh, I'm just going to have to do the cold call. So here we go. Hello, caller. How are you? Hi, it's Rosemary. Hey, Rosemary. Good to see you. My God, I mean, hear you. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting all morning to hear your voice and to hear about the sharks. What? <laughs> but good, good to be with you and your guests well, there too. As you well know, up there in Minnesota, and as you you have worked with the homeless up there, you know that there are plenty of sharks that are going to keep try to keep those people on the street or try to use them as a as a way to express their own difficulties in life. And and how do you handle the sharks when you come in contact with them? Well, there's a, an an immediate little automatic fear, little response just as instinctive, and I think that's lessening. And then usually when I'm there, I'm, I have an assignment uh, and that I'm working on that, that you've given me or I've set for myself. And um, I, I sometimes, I, I, I call on other, uh, like my, well, my Kundalini for sure, and know that there's, there's that guidance there. I, I wouldn't be doing those things if I, um, you know, wasn't guided in that way. And sometimes it is strong that I'm not afraid and I just can move right ahead and um, just do it because it, it, it's, the invitation is there and, and my mind isn't even thinking about it. Well, now you were, you were doing this even before you met me. You were working with the Alzheimer's patients. You were working in... In uh, convalescent hospitals, is that correct? In uh, care centers, yes. So, so you naturally have had a proclivity towards this type of an act- activity, right? In that way, I would say this is really interesting because I would not have thought of that, but uh, in this way. But you're right. Um, the the work that I have been doing and the training I have is working with the elderly uh, with dementia, or the, the general term Alzheimer's. And it is such a stereotype and such a narrow view. Uh, there, That's a shark's view of them. The woman that I've been trained with in the 50s and 60s could see what really was going on inside them and and as I'm very touched when we're talking about this. I hadn't thought of it that way, but really I was there uh, when I'm there. It, it, I'm, my stand is for them. They are in there, and one of the big things they're working on is they have unfinished business, and there were people that I know, um, they they were deeply touched when I, many of them, that I was, I was with them, and they would say to me, I was their only friend, uh, and it is it's it's very interesting to to think of that because the the whole industry of it is meaning to be kind and people working hard the nurses and the staff and people really working hard and yet, well it's interesting yeah. it's interesting you say that because uh, Jake and Eleanor are doing very very similar types of work just in different fields different levels and. And I, you know, I want to be clear that you know a lot of these people, even though they are sharks, they are only sharks in a momentary scenario. Not, they're not always trying to to create problems for other people. Some of them are just outgassing their emotional constipation, so to speak. And sometimes they just need to to share that <laughs> that, that blessed event with other people. Um, I just want to compliment you, Rosemary, for the work that you are doing and the work that you have done in your past. And I'm going to I'm going to give you another instruction. I'm going to give it to you on the air right now. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I want you to continue that work within a kundalini context, within the context of the safeties. So I want you to read through those safeties again, and I want you to see where the safeties apply 
to the work with, uh, with the, the, the people suffering different forms of dementia and Alzheimer's and to continue that work uh, that you know so well to do. Now, if you want to use the validation process, that's fine, but just make sure that you, you begin to really communicate with your kundalini in this sense. You understand? I do. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put you back on a listening mode. Thank you for calling yes. in, my dear. Oh, my pleasure. So there you have it, people. This is this is very, very important work. Jake and Eleonora and Rosemary and Amelia and 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 even you know the other Kundalini people that we met at the seminar, Adrian and Chris and and, and John Key and and, and uh, you know it's very very important for you to reach out into the populations and begin to spread your love, your Kundalini based love. This will not only help your own flow. But this will also help the flow of society. Right now, as we were talking with Eleonora earlier, you know, the, the, the Russians have, have come into Crimea. They've taken over Crimea. And, and, you, know, and, and, and they're, you know, it's just a, it's a blatant land grab. But oddly enough, it's a land grab that the, that the people living in those areas seem to be supporting, at least the most of the population are supporting, because they're ethnic Rus Russians. And, and so, it, you know, there's a very complicated level of, of uh, political and social balance that is being orchestrated at this point. Uh, you know, I would like to offer up our prayers to all the people involved, but most certainly those within the Ukraine. So uh, I would like to direct, uh, you know, our, our Kundalini uh, audience here to go to the Fukushima uh, prayer event, and I want you to apply the Fukushima style of praying, which is which is the Huna prayer, the power prayer, and I'd like you to apply that to the to the situation in the Ukraine and the Crimea area, and I want you to really just for, for the for the most positive benefit of of the people, the the you know the 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 artists, the writers, the the custodians, the, the nurses, the, the, the people, the populations. Forget about the leaders. They've already kind of set their sights on, on maybe shark-oriented uh, 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 goals and aspirations. But let's pray for the people, the populations. Let us, let us come together and give our energy, give our mana, and let that mana loa fall upon them, the, that grace of God fall upon them. Remember, as I've mentioned in some of the other uh, interviews or, or programs, that the kundalini, you don't want to let the kundalini go stagnant within you. You really want to let it move through you. A, a person that lets it get stagnated within them can have some very, very painful uh, phenomena based upon that stagnation. Remember, the kundalini is like air. It comes in and it goes out. It comes in and it goes out. And you need to be able to breathe that kundalini into other people. I don't know, some of you who have taken this seminar, and I recommend that anyone and everyone who could possibly make it to Ireland to come, because I blow the blessings on people. Yes, yes, I take a mint before I do that. But I do blow the blessings onto people and it's not in a way that you think it's just the the energy itself uh, uh, transports its 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 way from me into thee and so I want you to really 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 come to this if you can and I want to I want to say hello and blessings to those who are already coming and uh, yeah yeah really move that energy by allowing it to move. I'm not saying control it. I'm saying stop blocking it. Open the window. Open the window by doing these virtuous and noble activities every day of your life. It's like Jake said, you know, I just do this all the time. He does it all the time. And he knows, he knows about what he's talking about. He's, he's worked as a social worker and a counselor, but he's also been 
there on the field getting shot at. He was telling me yesterday, he was telling me, he was saying, yeah, you know, and, and, and he, you know, he's got this great way of, of talking. I wish I could, I could do it. Said, yeah, yeah, this is Jake. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was telling me that, uh, that the people, uh, his, his, uh, the, the soldiers, his fellow soldiers would say, hey, it's clear. Jake would say, no, 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 they're shooting at us. And he said, what do you mean? And he'd, he'd put his helmet on his, on his gun, and he'd hold it up, and wham! The machine gun fire would rip the helmet to shreds, and, and they would all go, yeah. Yeah, listen to Jake. <laughs> so they made him the point man <laughs> to walk out in front of everybody, and he did it, and he did it well. He survived, and he helped other people survive. I cannot tell you, and I don't think he can tell you, how many lives... He has had a direct influence in saving. How many grandkids and children get to see their, their, their grandfathers and their fathers simply because Jake was in their life? Think about that. Think about the waves that you create when you become a, a, a kundalini-activated, awakening person giving that grace into the environment as Jake and Eleonora and Amelia do, and Rosemary and Eileen. Eileen's here. I see you. Hello, Eileen. I see you there, girl. And I know the kind of grace that you give. I've seen you do it. And the kundalini lights you up like a Christmas tree. So, everyone, I want you to take examples from these four people, from, from, from Jake and Eleanor, Amelia, Rosemary, Eileen, five people. I want you to really begin to know that this is how you respond when you swim with sharks. The sharks are not bad people. They're just having a bad day. They may be having a series of bad days. Now, one, uh, one scenario that was described to me uh, recently is uh, sometimes when you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a job that has you deal with the general public, uh, sometimes they'll complain to the management just because they want to complain. The wife won't listen to them. The husband won't listen to them. The kids won't listen to them. Nobody listens to them. So they go to a restaurant. Well, the waiter kind of has to listen to them, right? And so, so the waiter, you know, the waiter won't be able to do anything right for this person because the person's not there for the food. The person's there to complain. Don't let these people get you down. You do your job. You trust in what you know to do. And then you just turn it over to your kundalini. You release the anxiety. You don't expect them to, to leave you a $1,000 tip or even a $10 tip. You don't, ex you don't have any expectations because you're realizing that they're just kind of there to, to be heard. They're there to be noticed. They're there to, to kind of unload some of that emotional baggage that nobody else is, 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 is allowing them to work through with them. And so they come to, to a person like, like me, I was a waiter for 15 years, and uh, you know I could I could see these people coming through the door, <laughs> you know. And so you just you give them the best service you can possibly give them with no expectations ever, and you're there, you know, as best as you can. You allow them to to bitch and moan at you. Fine, fine. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Very good, ma'am. You know, but your your kundalini is there. It's compassionate. It's holding them. And as they leave that table, a whole world has opened up for them. And this is the type of interaction that I'm going to encourage you to have. Don't let the sharks make you bleed. You, they'll bite at you, but your kundalini is there. You've got to remember that your kundalini is there. It is holding you. It is protecting you. You have nothing to fear. And if you're in one of those types of jobs where, where say, uh, the general public is encouraged to, to write a review of how you did your work. Well, don't you worry about it one bit. You have the kundalini. The kundalini is watching out for you. You're there to help, heal, hold, and embrace other people with that divine force that is flowing through you. And allow this to occur. Don't let the anxiety come to you. I remember I was 21, 22 and I was surfing in the uh, waters off of Santa Barbara, California, which is about an hour and a half north of uh, Los Angeles. And I was surfing out there, and, you know, it was kind of a slow day for the waves. When you're a surfer, you just kind of lay on the board, let your feet dangle, and you're, 
You're just waiting for the next wave to come, which, and you look like a seal because you have the uh, the wetsuit on. And I remember turning around and going, well, geez, you know, it's a slow day. It's a sunny, beautiful day in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. I'm just going to stay out here and loll around in the waves, wait for a good one to come, and hopefully ride it in, you know, without falling, which I did on occasion. Uh, and then I noticed the people on the cliffs above the beach were waving at me. And, you know, that happens a lot when you're out there. The tourists, you know, they want to wave at you. They want to get pictures at you. Well, they kept waving, and I just kind of waved back. And, and at that point, I started to feel a level of strong, strong anxiety. Strong. And this, this was during the time of my life that I had my... My, my body was infused with the kundalini awakening that came with me at birth. Because as some of you may know, the kundalini travels with you after death, but it follows you into your next life. Well, this, this kundalini awakening from a previous life had followed me into this life. And so I was kind of hypersensitive, and I felt like I was being hunted. So I started looking around for that shark fin, looking around for the shark fin, but what I didn't know at the time is that great white sharks don't, they don't do the surface thing like, uh, say, a, a white-tipped shark or some of the other sharks do. They, they, they'll cruise the surface, and, and, you know, you'll see them coming at you by that shark fin. Well, great whites don't do that. They like to come under you with a surprise, <laughs> and they'll, they'll take a big chunk out of you, back off, and watch you bleed, and see, well, is this easy prey or not? So I started, and you know, I, I know you know some people like that too, just as an FYI. So I started feeling really bad out there on the ocean. And, and, and finally, I remember the words I said to myself. I said, this isn't fun anymore. I'm out of here. So I paddled in towards the shore and I, you know, I uh, unzipped my, uh, my wetsuit and I got my, my board up and I'm walking up into the cliffs and there the people were waiting for me. And they said, yeah. What were you doing out there? We were trying to call you in. There's a huge fish circling you out there. We, there was no fin, but we could see the shadow under the water going around you. So <laughs> this is why I, I call this program Swimming with Sharks, because you will feel their presence, but you need not become a victim of that presence. Did you hear that? You will feel their presence but you need not become a victim of that presence. You need not bleed your life out into somebody who's causing you problems. The safeties are there to help you figure out ways to, to mitigate uh, the, the, the human sharks. And let me tell you, there are a lot more human sharks out there than there are kundalini people. Kundalini, you know, were pretty rare in the populations, which is why it's such a beautiful grace, such a beautiful joy and experience to be here with, with Jake and Ellie and Amelia. I just feel like, I feel like I'm with my family, and I am with my family. Now, what you won't hear in, in, in Jake's voice, because he's a little nervous about being on the radio, and I was too the first time I was on the radio, so I totally get it. He has got the best humor he has got the best i mean you wake up and he's lying through his teeth but it's funny as all hell <laughs> what, what amelia amelia the other night uh we were sitting at a cafe and uh and amelia wanted to give him some money and he says i don't want anything from the irish <laughs> And Amelia, and Amelia, at first Amelia kind of went, turned to him and said, what? And then, <laughs> then we all just laughed and laughed and laughed. I tell you, I really want to encourage everybody to uh, communicate with Jake and Eleanor Carney. They are the top of the, they're the best people in the world. I had, I had, we went and saw a Broadway show called The Jersey Boys, uh, uh, Amelia and I, and, uh, you know, you get in there, and, they, and, and, and the, the set design was, was your stereotypical understanding of what New Jersey looks like, right? It's basically a factory slum, and, and, and I think that's putting it nicely. It's, it's, it's a factory slum 
where you have, you know, old factories that have fallen apart, fallen into disuse, toxic chemicals leaking out all over the place. You got ditches full of garbage and trash and steel and, you know, and, and this is where, this is actually where Jake grew up. A, a, am I right, Jake? Yes, Chris, that's true. You're correct. Tell me a little bit about the the uh, social environment that you were in when you were growing. Well, it was a little greasy, I guess, you know, <laughs> a little uh, overcast, you know, um, a little tough, you know. But you how, know. how was it tough? Well, tough enough I had to eat pizza every day to combat that, uh, you know, that <laughs> form of entity. You know I mean? <laughs> he, he ate pizza every day. Yes. So, so now that's a that's a flat out lie. Okay. But, <laughs> but it's a funny flat out lie. Jake Jake has a healing gift and his healing gift is is humor. He is uh much of the time when he's out in the public, he's in a high state of amusement. And if you've listened to any of my other shows about the Kundalini, I have told you that it is best to be in a high state of amusement. You're not going to get attacked by entities in a high state of amusement because once you once you crack a joke at them, they, they can't handle that high vibration of amusement and joy, which are components of love. And so when you're when you're constantly in a high state of amusement and joy and love, your kundalini amplifies that back to you, back to you. And so you'll find things coming at you that you didn't ask for that are beautiful, that are wonderful, that are happy. Uh, people like the way Jake met Eleonora, I think, has a direct reflection on, on how both of them were engaging life at the time, and I'm looking at them right now. I wish you could see them. Jake, they're on a love seat. Eleanor is like under his arm. She's caressing his wrist. They are so in love with each other. My God, this is such a great thing to see. It makes me want to take a picture, but it would, you know, this is a radio program. <laughs> so anyway, uh, when we so we saw the Jersey Boys and, and all of this stuff, and and. You know, we saw the stereotypical idea of how New Jersey is. And then when I finally got out here, first time in my life I'm in New Jersey, uh, Jake and Eleanor are driving driving Amelia and I around. And, wow, it's such a beautiful place. I don't want you to believe anything that you've heard about New Jersey. Certainly not that, uh, what do they call those, the uh, reality program. It's not like that. They kind of do talk that way. And I, I see myself slipping into it a little bit here because I've been around Jake and his, his energy is so pervasive. His, 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 his humor is so, uh, well, it's funny. It just makes you laugh and laugh and laugh and it makes you want to emulate him. He's, he is quite the leader in his own right, but he would never admit to it. He is so self-deprecating. He's, He's one of my private students, as is Eleanor, his wife, as is Amelia, as is Rosemary. Hello again, Rosemary, and as is Eileen. Uh, I've had to tell him, I had to give him an, uh, an assignment. And the assignment that I gave to Jake was, Jake, enough with the self-deprecation. <laughs> I don't need, I don't want your kundalini to amplify your self-deprecation either. Even though I know you're couching it in humor, you know, sometimes you may not be, and sometimes that can that can help. This is a man who goes out into the uh, Veterans Administration hospitals, uh, uh, probably all over the country. He spends half his time in in Kiev, which is what we know as Kiev. He spends half his life there uh, helping the uh, the veterans of of uh, literally foreign wars in foreign countries. He helps those guys. He helps Eleanor's family, and he helps Eleanor, and he helps the people in general over there. Then he comes back to the United States, and he does the same thing over here. I want you to emulate this man. I want you to visit this man. I want you to visit his wife. Um, what's your email address, sir? Jake Carney. Hang on, hang on. Let me bring you over here. All right. It's Jake Carney, 36 at yahoo.com. J A K E C A R N E Y 36 at yahoo.com. And I am going to, uh, I am, 
I've known Jake uh, since 2000, before 2010. Uh, we've been working uh, on the on the Yahoo group, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One, together. If you go into the archives and you press in Jake and you do a search, you'll see a lot of his posts. Uh, the guy is just, he should be doing stand-up, number one. He should be doing stand-up comedy because it's clean. Well, sort of clean. Uh, he, he, most of it's clean. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's incredibly funny. It's incredibly funny. I mean, come out here to New Jersey, to Flemington, or what we like to call is it a Flemington. Uh, come out here to Flemington. <laughs> Visit Jake and Eleanor. Visit them. Become their new friends. Become part of their Kundalini family. They're they're really excellent teachers on what it means to go to the heart and give from the heart. Give from the love. Give from the compassion uh, that 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 we see so little of in our society these days, especially as as you look at the uh, television and some of the other aspects. Really give. They give from the heart, and they give it continuously, and they flow, and they and they and they they move with it. Uh, is has that? Tell me what your take is on this, Amelia. Thanks, Stephen. Well, I met Melanora in 2010 when we were in um, Brazil at St John of God's. But um, one of the wonderful things about Jake, I mean, Chris does speak and teach about joy and and humor and one of the wonderful things about jake is his humor and it is given you know it's actually you can feel it arriving into you releasing things and opening up your heart because when he's been humorous he's been humorous with love i mean he really is it's a rare gift for it to be like that and it is something that is received and i have enjoyed every minute of being here it is a grace, actually, that that he gives, you know. So I've enjoyed it so much, so much. This is how Kundalini people, I think, uh, uh, should really be within the, within the populations that are happening right now. You know, I'll say the populations du jour, uh, like the soup du jour. This is how uh, I, I feel is best appropriate uh, uh if you want to be successful in the life, then you open to how the Kundalini would like you to express. And for Jake, it is with his humor. And for Eleonora, it is with her love. She supports her husband. She loves her husband. And her husband loves her right back. I mean, there's so much love going to this little studio in Flemington, New Jersey. I mean, can you imagine? Have you ever heard of the word Flemington? No wonder they get all those spit jokes. You know, it's kind of funny. But this is the place where uh, the Lindbergh trial took place in the 1930s. Charles Lindbergh's uh, little little child was kidnapped, and and uh, this was where that big news event took place. This is this was their 15 minutes of fame in the early 1930s. And boy, if you want to see some beautiful examples of colonial houses, some of which are for sale. Uh, come to Flemington. Oh, I just come to visit Jake and Eleanor, and they'll show you. They know the place like the back of their hand. I went to a place called New Hope. It's over the uh, Delaware River, where Washington. For those of you here, here in the U.S., had to study U.S. history. Well, this was this is where General Washington crossed with his troops to to fight the British. And uh, these days, of course, we love we love our British brothers and sisters. We love. Our British brothers and sisters, our French brothers and sisters, and our Spanish brothers and sisters, and our Portuguese brothers and sisters, because, and the Ukrainian, yes, Eleanor, I am absolutely there with you. <laughs> because they were all there at the time. The Ukrainians came a little bit later, but we still love them anyway. So with regards to these, these people that you come in contact with that may try to bring a, a dark cloud of experience over your head. You don't have to. You don't have to partake of that. Your Kundalini does not insist on it, and neither should you. One of the things that I see happening with Kundalini people is they get comfortable in their misery. They get comfortable in their misery, and then the Kundalini amplifies that misery, and that that 
that turns into a whirlpool of depression. I don't want you to be comfortable in your misery. Are we clear? I don't want you to be comfortable in your misery. Now, if that's the way you want to go, then, you know, that's the way you're going to go, but you don't have to go that way. You can, you can kick yourself in your, in your miserable complacency, and you can get out of that whirlpool. You know, sometimes you, you just have to fight the tide of depression that's coming to you. Now, a lot of the, uh, shall we say, and I, and I say this tongue-in-cheek, healthcare practitioners in the United States will will push chemicals on you. You don't need chemicals. You know, these are the chemical sharks. These these, these are actually some of the bigger sharks in in the waters of our of our of our social wilderness, you know, our social ocean. These are some of the bigger sharks and and, and you know they're they're given permission to go out into the general populations and feed upon the sick and hurt uh, simply by virtue of, of, of a, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, by virtue uh, of an ideology that suggests that they know more than you do about your physical systems. And they may well indeed know more about you than you know about yourself, but they don't know more than you. Matter of fact, children compared to a kundalini awakened person and i need you to understand that so that you don't accidentally partake of chemicals that would damage uh your body that is carrying the divine grace of the kundalini divinity has no uh, equal on this world let me say that again divinity has no equal on this world there is nobody who can equal your kundalini uh, awakened uh, expression on this world, actually in this cosmos. The only people that can come up to you are those that are also Kundalini awakened. And eventually, there's, you know, as as we have the internet now, and we have all these, you know, Reiki people this, and and uh, Qigong people that, and Taekwondo people this, or Aikido people that. Uh, more and more people are going to come into the kundalini just by virtue of some of the exercises that they're doing, but also by virtue of the communication that is taking place. This program is a great example of that. As you listen to my voice and as you listen to the frequencies of energy that are coming into your, into your eardrum and from your eardrum into the spinal cord and from the spinal cord into the chakra system and the, the energetic anatomy of the human being, well, you begin to understand what it is I'm saying when I say that, that people are becoming more and more and more active with the kundalini. Now, uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, I'll be publishing some books fairly soon. Uh, I have a lot of material. I have a, I'm, I'm looking at maybe five or six books uh, right off the bat. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I said that right, six. Uh, and I want you to look at these. I want you to read these. I want you to get these. They won't be overpriced because... I don't even charge now. And guess what? Jake and Eleanor don't charge either. Amelia doesn't charge either. Eileen doesn't charge either. Neither does Rosemary charge. Do you kind of see the pattern that is being set by the Kundalini? It's not by me. It's by the Kundalini. That is me now. I've had it for so long. It's fused so strongly with me. Uh, it it only allows me the 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 uh or the or the uh the fantasy of of having a separate personality you know it retracts a little bit when i'm not giving shakti potter pot or i'm not uh giving a seminar or i'm not for some reason or other doing like like this show when the show comes up well then it comes in much stronger uh get ready for some bliss when you're in bliss the sharks will scatter when you're in high amusement, the sharks will scatter, or they'll start laughing with you and stop being sharks. Let me say that again. If you're in high amusement and you're radiating that joy, that love, that happiness, the sharks will either scatter or they'll laugh with you, and then they're no longer sharks. 
Think about that. Think about the ability of change that is traveling with you, that is located at the base of your spine, and in some, coming out the top of the head. Begin to realize that you can commit change, positive change, in our sociological environments. I don't care what country you're in. We can commit that change by just being there. For instance, uh, after, you know, when, when we leave the studio here today, uh, uh, Jake and, and Eleanor, are, in their kindness, are going to drive us down to John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City, and we're going to fly to, uh, to Ireland, and we're going to give this Ireland seminar. But we're also going to, to give a, a megalithic tour of uh, certain areas of County Meath and other areas uh, near the New Grange archaeological site that is part of our Irish seminar. So this is really a special seminar in Ireland. I mean, we can't even do it here in the States because we don't have something that predates the Egyptian pyramids. We don't have something that's older than, than the oldest uh, 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 cathedral in France. We don't have anything that is, that is pre-Roman here. We don't have anything that is pre-Carthaginian. Uh, you know, the New Grange uh, uh, site is exceptionally old and exceptionally charged with energy that actuates and activates the Kundalini, which is, of course, why this is the second seminar that we're going to have in New Grange, and I hope it's just the second of many. And 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 uh, and, and speaking of which. Uh, I need to really, really give notice to Amelia Centara uh, and John O'Connor, her, her husband, and her entire family uh, uh, um, who are helping with this seminar. Who, have, You know, John, her husband, has gone out and he's, he's put up the posters in, in Dublin, you know, and, and of course, you know, he's an ex-cop, so he's not going to be bothered in Dublin, but, you know, and he's like a giant of a man. He's, he's a giant of a man, and and uh, he's going around, you know, sticking up the posters. And, no, you know, people are just kind of going, oh, yes, of course you can hang that poster there. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> and I know he might be listening right now. Hi, John. Thank you. Thank you for your help with this seminar. But I want to thank especially Amelia. Amelia has, she, she organized the New York seminar. She's organized the Ireland seminar. And she's organized other seminars. She is an event planner from heaven. This woman knows how to do it. And I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Amelia Centara. Oh, Amelia! Hail! Hail, Amelia! <laughs> now, getting back to Jake. Uh, if you're wondering, I was like, well, you know, gosh, you know, I come out here to Flemington, and and I, how will I know? How will I know I'm seeing Jake if I've never met Jake before? Well, Jake looks like Marcus Aurelius, Caesar, Marcus Aurelius. I kid you not. And and all you have to do is send him a laurel to put over his head, and you will know. Make sure it's a golden one for a sacred male. But Jake is the spitting image of a of a of a Roman Caesar, and he 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 holds it well. He holds it well. He he's a, an extremely handsome man, well, probably the handsomest man in this area. Is that right, Eleonora? Yeah. Yep. Yep. See. Yes, sir. yes. Absolutely. And of course, you know when I when I when I saw Jake, he, immediately my hand went to my chest and went, "Hail Caesar!" <laughs> we all got some good laughs. But you can kind of tell the high humor I'm in because it's all Jake's fault. <laughs> it's all Jake's fault. Now, if there's anybody who is listening here in the archives, I'd like to say hello and welcome once again, uh, or, or I should say in the chat room. And I would like to, to, to also say, of course, hello to the people that are listening to this in the future, which is probably going to be some of them because uh, we're in a different time period right now. We wanted to do the show to get it into the archives so that people can listen to it. Uh, uh, so... So hello to you who are in the chat room right now, and and I might I might suggest Fash G and 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 maybe uh, maybe uh, Eileen. I'm going to bring Eileen on the air. Hello, Your Holiness. Hi, Chris. 
<laughs> Hi, Eileen. Can you hear How me? are you? I'm fine. I'm in the middle of driving because I have an appointment, so I wanted to listen. So I'm going to pull over. Yeah, yeah, might want to pull over there. It's kind of hard to work whatever it is you're working. Um, you can't see the room either, can you? I'm sorry? You can't see the chat room, can you? No, I can't. No, I can't. No, it's okay. I was I just going to check in and see. Now, now, I want you to, to, to you know, kind of stay on the side of the road while you're listening. I don't want you driving while you're listening to the show. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. You might start. You might start laughing so hard and have an accident, like Jake does all the time. It's just scary. I mean, that's one thing. It is. It's a. It's a wonderful show, and I wish at some point I could meet Jake and Ellie. Well, I think. I think you will. I think you will. I, I think. You know, they left to go to Florida. Oh. They're, they're, they, they just came back from Florida, so I'm sure that they would be able to to visit oh. you time or another they have a brand new uh hybrid camry so that gets them down there for like a dollar so so it's pretty good it's well, pretty if good they, if, if they do come down tell them to look me up i'd love to meet them i will and you got jake's email so give him a give him an email will you okay will do all right my dear i'm gonna put you back on hold all right and i'm gonna bring a, a rosemary on because Rosemary, are you sitting there at your computer? I'm uh, upstairs. I brought some uh, something upstairs to put away. Yeah. But I'm here. I'm heading down to my computer. If you need that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see. I can see you're flying down the stairs. <laughs> now, now, uh, can you see if anybody's in the chat room? I don't know if anybody's here. I couldn't see that before. It didn't oh, okay. ask me that, so I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint oh, you. Oh, no worries, no worries, my dear. You go back upstairs, do what you were doing. I'm just no, going to have. I'm good. Okay, all right, my dear. And uh, I'm going to uh, ask anybody in the chat room who feels like it. Uh, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six to call in uh, on the air right now. And so, if you feel like doing that, go ahead and give us a call. Uh, this will be probably, oh, okay, looks like somebody's calling in right here. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Master C. Ah, Master Fashti, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm just sitting over here laughing my brains out over here. Hey, um, I think you're laughing. Uh, I'm staring at the king of comedy right here, right now. Uh, anybody in the chat room? <laughs> you know, I've been um, sitting up here just refreshing the page there, so I miss a, a couple of words from time to time uh, that you're saying. Um, but uh, I don't see it. it it's, for some reason, it's not... Displaying itself on the um, oh, that's because the, the web page. We're, we're so both I, on iPads, and the and the iPads won't open up that darn thing. You'd think they'd get that fixed. So I don't think the chat room's even uh, to be honest with you. Wow, I never I never thought about it that well. Thank you, Fash G. How are you? It's always a, I'm doing quite well. I'm just coming along and How's enjoying the the. Um, it's just screaming. <laughs> it's kind of hard to stay seated here. <laughs> well, it's, good. it's been wonderful, the Shakti Pod and everything. Yes, I, I'm, I'm so grateful to you and Amelia. Um, I'm sorry, Santara, um, for what you do. I was just leaving a message on uh, Facebook. Uh, expressing gratitude, and of course to Jake and Eleonora for providing a, a place for you to uh, rest your weary heads uh, before here's, you jump into the plane and take off here's for uh, here's Jake across and the Eleanor. pond. There to, they're they're, I'm saying, sorry. they're gonna say hello to you. Hi, how are you? Thank you for calling. Oh, in. good to hear your voice. Dobry dzień. How are you? Godzilla. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Blessings for both of you. <laughs> That's great. And here's Santara. Hello, Fashti. Oh. oh. 
Hello, Hello dear. How are you? Very good, as always. Hi, can I you hear me? Your voice. Yes, I can. I love your voice, Patsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a little bit of a uh, uh, time delay, it seems. Probably another product of your, your uh, iPads. <laughs> Good to hear you. Okay. Oh, let me get out of the way so Chris and Oh, oh, Sashi, you're never in the way. Are we clear about that? I'm here. Clear. Yeah. You're never in the way, my friend. You're like it's it's that's like saying <laughs> that's like saying a beautiful tree, a, a tree of life is in the way. Well it's not. You are the way, my friend. You are the way. <laughs> well thank okay. you. Thank you, Master. Uh, All right. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. you Let me get out of the way then. Um, take care. Okay. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Fashi. That's very kind of you. Now, now, everybody, when you're swimming with the sharks, you have to understand that if you allow them to bite, they're going to bite. If you leave blood in the water, they're going to come after it. It's natural. It's how they do things. And I want you to know that, you know, there's certain levels of consideration that you need to adopt when you're when you're swimming with the sharks so that you don't attract their their more challenging natures. Okay? So you don't leave blood in the water. And by blood in the water, you don't leave yourself open to being a victim. You don't leave yourself open to being uh, uh, dominated or changed into a person that doesn't uh, represent the, the fine ethics and the noble qualities that your kundalini is, is, is galvan, galvanizing you within you. Okay? You don't fall into characteristics and activities that would be uh, against the ethics that the Kundalini brings to you. Uh, some of the other sharks that, that I want to mention are, are non-corporeal sharks. They don't have a body. They're just entities that come along and they try to disrupt you. And the, the Kundalini will allow this so that, you're, so that you're being tested with your fear. You're being tested with, with your ethics. You know, you know you, that $100 bill that you saw the blind man drop, well, do you pick it up, put it in your pocket? Do you pick it up and give it back to him? What choice do you make? You see what I'm saying? You know, that that is also, that's less of a shark. That's more of a testing. But, you know, it's testing to see whether you're a shark or not. And God bless all the sharks in our oceans because they serve a very, very positive purpose. And I'm not sure they're so happy about me using their uh, species identification as a uh, as a as a sign of uh, anything negative. No, 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 no. Well, you know, except for the one circling me. But he didn't bite me, so you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. But sharks, you know, don't don't eat sharks' fin soup. Don't don't eat anything that has been procured in a way that is is as a way of stripping our seas of life. Sharks are a very big part of the of the marine ecosystem, and we need to honor them and let them live. Let them live. You know, we need to stop pouring the, the, the pork blood into the rivers. We need to stop allowing the, the, the slaughterhouses to empty their blood into the, into the water so that it goes out there and it attracts more sharks, because it will, naturally to the shores well naturally they'll want to bite people okay so that's just an fyi about the natural ecosystems of what we know to be real sharks now the the human sharks human sharks range in everywhere from a criminal uh, that is of a, of a lower economic strata to wall street people like bill gates you know who decided uh, a while back that he wants to uh, to uh Monsanto eyes everything in sight. Okay, so you know we've got the big sharks, we've got the little sharks, and I'm just going to say deal with the sharks around you as best you can. So if you don't want to support a uh, 
genetic modification of this world, then buy organic food to feed your kundalini. Buy organic food to feed your kids. Buy organic foods to feed yourself and to feed your friends. Don't, I mean, I understand not everybody has access to that, but if you can't buy it, then grow it yourself. Really, you're going to want to start doing this because, you know, there's going to be a huge, heavy backlash with regards to genetically modified organisms, and I don't want you to have to be a part of that. I'm not going to go into details here. I'm not allowed to tell you all the uh, the precognitions that I get, but I can tell you that much. Buy anything that isn't organic. Don't buy anything that you know is genetically modified. Okay? Feed your kundalini the natural produce and products of this world, this natural world. Not this this plastic, you know, they had snow back here the, in the winter in Virginia, a little bit south of here. The snow was plasticized by virtue of, of chemical engineering in the air, in the sky. The chem, They chemtrailed it really, really heavy. And so this storm came up and the snow came down and it wouldn't melt. Even if you put a blowtorch, there are people on YouTube. Go ahead, go to YouTube and go snow, plastic snow that doesn't melt. And you'll see that people are blowtorching snow that doesn't melt. Think about that. Think about what that does to the water table. Okay. Now here in New Jersey, they whine and they complain. Oh, we've had so much snow. You know, but they don't really know how good they have it because they got a lot of clean water here. You go to California, and they're parched right now, uh, partly because they, they mismanage their water systems in California, but, but also partly due to the weather, due to the weather manipulation that is occurring in this world at this time. Really, really be careful with the water that you use. Uh, uh, Francine, who owns the, the ashram there in Santa Rosa, she's done some really nice things. And what she does is when she's running the water to, for a shower, she puts a, a gallon water jug under there just to collect the water, and then she goes out and waters the garden with that water. How cool is that? This is a woman that's designing her own wind turbine in order to use wind energy that doesn't kill her life uh, to generate electricity for her. She's an amazing kundalini-activated woman. Okay. This is the, the, the quality of people that I want you to realize are, are also in the world that are also swimming with the sharks. As you swim with the sharks. And in this program, I really am dedicating to, to, uh, to helping you know how to navigate that kind of water. Helping you know how to navigate the kind of sharks that you'll see that are embodied in a human body. And as I mentioned before, when you get into these big cities like New York, there are non-corporeal sharks that are out there too. One of one of a kind uh, that I'll mention here is the the what I call the pointy hat guys. I won't say pinheads because that would be kind of you know <laughs> defaming them, but they they're pretty tall and they got a pointy hat and they stand over you and they try to scare you and that's all they do. That's all they're good for. That's all they do. And once again, we don't know that they're not being allowed to do this with you by your kundalini so that you learn what it is to be in front of a strange thing and not be afraid. Even if it's pushing fear into you, you can choose not to be afraid. You can stand your ground. You can trust your kundalini to protect you. And that's what I want you to do. That's what I'm going to suggest you do. It's not about what I want about what I'm suggesting to you. You allow your kundalini to be present like this with his amusement. His, he is so funny that people can, I mean, and it just goes on, and it's like a river of laughter. It's a river of grace, a river of, of, of comedic kundalini amplified healing that this man gives into the population. To people he doesn't even know, people sitting at the tables next to him, they're cracking up just because they can hear him, which means they're partaking of his radiance. Emulate that if you can't. And if you can't, just emulate it in the, in, in the, in the, the signature way 
that your kundalini comes through you like Amelia does. You know, Amelia, she's very beautiful. She's very, you know, very pleasing to see, very pleasing to hear, very pleasing to listen to. You know, she's not a comedic woman, but she's not in, in any way, shape, or form not funny or anything like that. But she has her own beauty, her own grace, her own level of communication through the kundalini into the population. She does the KITT. But even if she just stood there without even touching you, she would be giving these healings. Eleonora, the same way. When she's in in the country of Ukraine, of Ukraine, she, she, you know, she's a completely different person because she's not struggling with the English. You know, imagine taking yourself to Ukraine and and having to learn Russian, although I have to say, the Russian language, uh, from what little of it I've learned from uh, from uh, Eleonora is it's an easy language. Don't let it throw you. It's very easy. But you got to have a teacher like Eleonora, somebody who who says things like suffix this or you know do this or that, say it this way, not that way. Dos vidonia, things of that level. I have a terrible English accent on my Russian, I'm sure, or my Russian, but. But she reaches into the populations these ways. She helps her countrymen and her countrywomen come through very, very difficult times. And these times are difficult for people in, in Ukraine right now. Uh, try this yourself. Feel your kundalini radiance come up. Allow it to come up. Even if you're not even activated yet, come to a seminar. Come to, to and we're not talking kundalini reiki here. We're not talking kundalini yoga those are really, really good and, and verifiable systems that can sometimes awaken the kundalini. We're not talking about that. We're talking about kundalini that is, is activated or awakened uh, by myself or by, by, other, by other means uh, that happen to come to you. This is a great way to begin to live your life in conjunction, in partnership with your kundalini. Think about it. Think about it. Now, I'm going to give you a number to call, 347-934-0026. If you would like to call, call that number, 347-934-0026. And I'm handing it over to Santara. Do come to New York if you're able, or not New York, whoops, <laughs> Ireland, if you are in the position to do so. But just to let you know that there will be a seminar in September. It's a long way off, September, but it's not that far away that you couldn't maybe start thinking about it. Rosemary is organizing that in Minnesota. And during future um, blog talks, we'll give you more information about that, and Rosemary can tell you about it herself. But just for now, maybe I would put Rosemary on, and she could fill you in a little bit about what's happening with the seminar in Minnesota. Rosemary? Yes. Hi. How's the seminar coming for for, uh, Minnesota? Well, we're still working on the details, and I just got back, as you know, from the ashram last Thursday, and I'm kind of getting myself in gear. And we have, uh, it it will be September 27th and 28th, Saturday and Sunday, and we're doing everything to keep the, the cost as low as we can so that that would help people in their ability to come. It is in St. Paul's side of the river, we have the venue, we have the place, and I will be talking with him this week, and also we're doing a lot of promotion. My plan is to be getting around and showing people the Kundalini video, getting uh, flyers made, um, and um, the final details. And Eileen is working from Fort Myers with people that she has worked with the last time. That will be three years ago now. And I always express my gratitude to Eileen because it was out of my reading about the Kundalini seminar in the Edge magazine that I showed up there. So we already are listed in there, in their list of events. Well, I would like to to make a shout out as well for for putting that seminar together in Minnesota that she did uh, a couple years ago. And and also for you, Rosemary, for being such an excellent uh, uh, student and also such an excellent uh, chalice that is holding the Kundalini, a chalice that has enough 
divine nectar for anyone who comes around who might want to sip. And I and I really appreciate you, Rosemary, organizing that, and Eileen helping you organize that. Thank you both. Thank you. I, I can only have one on at a time for this studio, but thank you, Rosemary. And and and, uh, and Santara has more to say. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rosemary. Um, I want to say as well, um, just to John, because, um, hi, John, um, you'll be, oh, well, okay, <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> I'll see you again soon, and I know you're listening to this either live or you'll be listening to it on the archives before I get home. So, hi, see you next week. I love you. I love you too, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and folks. He's normally in the next room. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, John. Thank you, thank you for being such a supportive Kundalini husband for your Kundalini expressive wife at this time. And and uh, I would also like to 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 thank your daughter who is helping us, uh, uh, John and Amelia's daughter Yvonne O'Connor, uh, who is going to be with us there at the seminar in Ireland at New Grange which I hope everyone who's listening to this is going to attend. Uh, this is uh, the last in March 2014, just in case these programs go on for a number of years. I don't want you all running out there. It just, you know, this weekend. So, so uh, Rosemary is also, uh, I believe, the last weekend in September, and that will be 2014 as well. Uh, I would like to go ahead and... and uh, Give Jake and Eleonora uh, uh, a, an opportunity to to say hello to everyone who is listening, and then we'll go ahead and uh, end the program here. Hi, everybody. Um, I just had a great time at the seminar and being with Chris and Amelia here. Uh, everything is just so – it's been like uh, – Oh, I, it's hard to uh, pronounce bliss, you know. Um, it's the way it's been. And uh, I'm going to try, Eleanor and I are going to try to make Ireland. We just had so much fun, and we don't want to separate from Chris and Amelia because it's just like the best thing ever. Uh, and, and the seminar, too. I came like five million years in the course of that seminar and our visitation here. Um, you know, if you, anybody's on the air and listening and doesn't know, uh, these seminars are really the best. And Chrism's work is the best. I think he's the best teacher. I don't go for anybody that's short of what he is. And he is it all. He gives so much, and so did Amelia. And, and they're expressing themselves and their love and their way to, to try to help people elevate themselves. Just been a gorgeous situation. So I'll give it to Eleonora here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I really don't know what to add. Since, you know, what I can only prove what Caesar said, you know, you know, because who can say it better than him? So that's why I, I'm just share every, the, any single word my husband Jake said to you. I'm really enjoyed my time in at the seminar at Hudson River uh, at, uh, last weekend. And then that company we are having now and we are welcoming in our New Jersey home. Chris and Emilia. And say hello to your to your friends in Ukraine. Say it in Russian. Да, добрый день, добрый день. Как дела? Хорошо. I wish you all the best. Yes, me and Jake and Emilia and Chris and all Kundalini awakening people. Oh, thank you, Jake. Thank you, Eleanor. And here's Emilia. She's going to say a, a a final word or two. I am. Well, it has been a wonderful visit um, to the United States. I've really enjoyed my time here. The seminar was very special, meeting people that I have communicated with by email and to meet them in person and to be in their presence was very special. And I know that we will continue to communicate with each other. And, you know, um, 
being with Quizm at a seminar, I'm, I have been at quite a few, and each one is very different and very special. And it is always like a coming home for me, um, a scenario like this, which I know now, Jake, you understand that. It's wonderful to be in the company of other Kundalini people. And I want to thank um, Jake and Eleonora for their hospitality and for their grace, and the two of them, and Jake in particular, being, you know, humor is, a, it's, you know, his humor, it sounds almost trivial, but it is so not. It is such a gift. It is such a healing gift that, that Jake has. And I think he knows that. Um, but maybe he doesn't know how very, very special it really, really is and how it expands into everything that he does and everything that he touches and all the people that he meets. Um, and I have been very affected by it, Jake, and I am grateful. Thank you. So, yeah, so roll on to Ireland now. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody there. Rolling on to Ireland, rolling on to Ireland. Make sure that when you come and visit Jake and Eleonora, the first thing you say is, Hail Caesar! This way he'll know that you've been listening to the show, and, and he'll give you an extra crust of bread with uh, uh, Irish cheese on it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway... Everybody, thank you for listening. And remember, remember, when you're swimming with sharks, you don't. When you're swimming with human sharks, you don't need to to respond to any invitation that would bring you into depression, that would bring you into pain, that would bring you into anything that that is other than joy and love and forgiveness and surrender to your kundalini. Swimming with sharks is like swimming with little kids that don't have any control over their emotions. And I'm talking human sharks. As these human sharks coagulate around you and and collect around you because of your brilliance, they may try to bring you down. Oh, you don't have the kundalini. Oh, here, try this drug. Try this alcohol. Try this thing. Try that. Don't believe it for a bit. You have got the greatest gift that a man or a woman can have on this world. And I want to say a special hello to Adrian, to Chris, to uh, Jan Key, uh, to, to, uh, what? Eduardo, thank you. <laughs> to uh, Amelia, to Jake, to Eleonora, to Eduardo, to everybody uh, who, had came, who came to the seminar. I want to say a special hello to all of you. You did, Ido and Michelle. Oh, that's right. Ido and Michelle, who came to half the seminar. You know, Ido and Michelle as well. Thank you all for for allowing us to partake of the beautiful energies and the beautiful uh, witness of Kundalini awakened people together. Remember what I said at the seminar. We are all drops in a still pond, and the 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 rings that that come from us. Uh, come into us from each other. We are there for each other. We are there for the general po- unawakened population. We are the pioneers. We are the people that are showing a paradigm of light and love and humor and amusement and grounding and courage and grace under fire that people can have in this world. And I want to thank you for listening.